a spot that looks like its cranium is open. <laughs> yes, and welcome to the awesome. screen. <laughs> Very like, questionable. What is what is that's probably my favorite starting sentence we've had for a while. <laughs> I don't that's understand uh... why its cranium is open. <laughs> yeah, there's a spot where its cranium is open. Hooray! It's Via. Uh... It's Via. <laughs> I mean, I think it's supposed to be a stripe. It just for some reason is a slightly different shade than the other stripes. It's the same color as the giraffe in the background. I think they just like mistakenly did that because they saw that color. They did paint by numbers and picked the wrong number. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's worse. <laughs> well, whatever oh, it's going now. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. Knockoff tick is gone. Oh. Uh, it also rigid. has diddle feet. Has what feet? Diddle. You know the mouse. No. You don't know diddle. Don't know diddle. diddle? Yeah. I don't know diddle or squat. <laughs> <laughs> it has both sweet seas. Oh yeah, diddle. I forgot. Yeah. I know I... that one. It's just that I <laughs> don't think I ever realized it was a mouse. <laughs> I'm still none the wiser. <laughs> I didn't know it was a mouse either. I thought it was a figment of imagination until I heard another um, a, a art YouTuber describe it as a mouse and like my jaw dropped to the ground. Diddle. Diddle. Diddle? Diddle? Question mark? It, it, each of its feet are bigger than its head. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's Diddle. It's cute. That what made, that's what made the plushies so extremely comfortable. The yeah. Diddle feetsies. How does it clean its soles? <laughs> Rubbing them together. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I remember Dillo mostly because they were like on every single stationery when I was like 10. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the over here, the thing that was on every single stationery, and I think to a certain extent still is a lot of kids' stationery, especially for quote unquote for girls, was uh, Lisa Frank. Who? Yeah, I only heard of that because there was this whole artist controversy of them stealing um, artists' uh, stuff. Only yeah, that was a thing that, that happened. Oh god, that's oh. Carla! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's like like pick anything and throw up a rainbow on it, and that's probably <laughs> the most saturated rainbow on the planet as well. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I mean, I don't know what the current stationary, you know, uh, hype is <laughs> amongst ten-year-olds. <laughs> I think it's iPad. Oh, probably. I mean... Well, just... I don't remember anything particularly. The trolls? Having oh, a troll cool. on the end of the pencil. Oh, that's cute. Oh yeah, those pencil thingies. Uh, I oh, always oh, hated God. those, but I felt like I put a pencil up that butt. <laughs> yeah, that is. So how's everybody? It's, it's this is a VS stream, by the way. Oh, <laughs> is it? I thought it was stationary stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's VS stream, by which I mean approximately a third of the runtime will be devoted to talking about Project VIA, and the rest of it will just be whatever. Um, mm. <laughs> Inspiration. As is the way. I, th I think Chip Chip nailed it on the head during their stream <laughs> when they they said the sentence is going to stick in my head. Uh, Project VIA is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Did 
which I'm like, wow, harsh, but you've got a point. <laughs> this is the 19th stream and we haven't really made anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> we made a lot of good ideas. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah. are. We're very much still in spaghetti, and I don't know if we're ever going to leave. <laughs> I, I think I also said something along the lines of that during my stream of we never left the spaghetti space. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a really carb heavy meal. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Spaghetti oh, with spaghetti, spaghetti <laughs> sauce. <laughs> We blended some spaghetti to make sauce. <laughs> Can't believe I said that. Yes, the, it, the very specific words "project via" is nothing. They, they've <laughs> stayed in my head. <laughs> uh, sometimes I am very harsh for some reason. <laughs> Again, I... it's you're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Not wrong, but you know, we're having fun and that's what's important about Project Me, in my yeah. opinion. It's essentially like a, a slightly, a mildly, a homeopathically more focused uh, version of our previous Doodle streams, so... Yeah, sometimes. You know. We're having fun and we're doodling and it's great and we're talking about things that make games worse. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we know We're doing what's Yeah, game design by negation. Just do, <laughs> do what we don't. <laughs> don't have all these things in your game. It will be unplayable. <laughs> uh. Or do have all these things in your game and just make people very angry. <laughs> That's also an option, I guess. I I can think of at least one game out there that was designed terrible on purpose, but it's because it was designed that way as a response to people talking about, oh, we want games to be realistic, realistic, and they went, all right, cool. Here, Here's a delivery sim simulator thing where the time it takes to get between cities in the southwest <laughs> US is realistic. Good luck with that. Yeah. You will be playing for literally weeks <laughs> on the same <laughs> delivery. Yeah, that's what people want, right? Somebody does. To be fair, I did I did watch a video the other day about <clears throat> the you know plug and play consoles games that you can get, yeah. and they usually crap. Um, there's somebody found one that is like an actual game with graphics and everything that isn't just sort of knockoffs of old Super Nintendo or just Nintendo games, um, and it's a train simulator. It's a Japanese. <laughs> train driver simulator and it's got like ps2 graphics which is weird for a plug and play to have that and it's got like the controls of inside a train and they vibrate when you go over things and it's really weird and i looked at that and i thought yeah i'm kind of <laughs> kind of want to play that now <laughs> <laughs> so the realism does go a certain way <laughs> towards making you go Ooh. at least for me but i'm boring yeah, but like there's certain elements of realism. So like sitting there, a, a lot of kids had the train phase, and so being sitting there going, "Ooh, <laughs> bits of train, yay!" But I I can think of very few people who go right. I want to simulate spending eight hours in a car to deliver a package, <laughs> and I want to spend all eight hours simulating that. I should specify like, I I I do I did not have a train phase. I, I'm not interested in trains, but that something about that simulation just seemed quite nice because you've got to stop just at the right point, and that means applying the right amount of braking without jostling the passengers, and there's something really smooth about it. It reminds me of the only thing I enjoyed when I used to drive, which was uphill starts. Um, when you in the ma we have mostly manual cars over here, um, and so starting on a hill <clears throat> involves getting the right 
amount of clutch to the right amount of accelerator and the right gears and all that sort of stuff. And when you get that right, oh, it's real smooth. That's the only bit of driving I enjoy. <laughs> Using a clutch is just anxiety. Oh, if, if I ever drive, I'm driving an automatic. As somebody who passed their test with a manual, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> There's one more thing to have to worry about that we don't need. Let's get rid of yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, most people are not driving in such a way where that level of optimization is necessary. It's yeah, just the, one the, more thing to distract you. Yeah, there are def definitely some people who are, you know, can can do with that level of. At some point, you've got to you've got to realize that you are just reiterating a sentence that somebody has just said, and there's only so many different like. <laughs> There's only so much thesaurusizing you can do before you realize you're not actually adding anything. <laughs> so oh, I'm just yeah, gonna I have sentence. that often enough. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember that we had a conversation and I, like, I, I don't know what we were talking about, but I did like a yes, but, and then I made the exact same point. <laughs> 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 and it still haunts me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, I at, at least this is just a like casual our... conversation and not something that's ever going to affect really anyone. <laughs> On Friday, I was in a meeting where we had multiple discussions of slight differences of descriptions of learning outcomes for class. And when you've got 50 mathematicians in a room arguing about semantics, uh, <laughs> let's just say we were there for three hours and we didn't get done. Oh, no. Who has a beep beep? Am I just hello? hearing things? Who? Hello? What? Who has what? I'm hearing a beep beep. I'm not hearing a beep beep. Is it you? It might be me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my parents' extra room and they have a lot of shit in here. And I think uh, something's beeping. <laughs> to be fair, the other day my um, smoke alarm did beep because it needed new batteries. But It just got new batteries, so if it's beeping again, screw it. <laughs> Yeah, one of uh, so on part of our campus we've got an early uh, learning uh, a school but it's designed specifically for uh, students students who are either deaf or for one reason or another have trouble communicating orally um, so the whole point is to get these young kids um usually between the ages of like four and seven and teach them ways of communication, whether that be we're learning sign language or we're working on speech pathology things because your tongue makes sounds weird or let's talk about <laughs> various no, digital applications that you can use to help communicate the fact that you want orange juice, not apple juice, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but on Friday, they had a little bit of excitement. Uh, because a mom came up to pick up their kid, and they, they, they literally picked up the small child in arms, which meant that small child was now at the perfect height to pull the fire alarm. Uh. <laughs> How small was this child? I, I think they were on the younger end, so they were closer to three than they were to seven. I'm going to work under the assumption that the end of this story is that they did pull the fire alarm. <laughs> yes, that's my assumption. Yes, they they did pull the fire alarm, and they had to call security, and security had to call the fire department. The small child had to pay a fine. <laughs> had a great day. You know, I've been working on these sort of stumpy creatures, and I don't know if it'd be funnier for them to be really big or really small. Why not both? Stuffy? 
I like the idea of them being really small. <laughs> but you get like, it depends on the tree that it would be either from or mimicking, I guess. Because like you have very, very thick trees and very, very thin trees. So, so should, you're going to get a little this be like something where we can like. <laughs> We're just sitting on it. Yeah, do you, do you sit on it or do you stub your toe on it? What's the. Yeah, that's the two sizes. Well, I was going a little bit more extreme. So is this small enough that we can sit on? Oh, or is right. this big enough that we're going meep? <laughs> is, it, is it big enough that you can play a sport on? Ooh, field. <laughs> Tree stump field. So, um... So we have a blob as well. <laughs> which is not to be eaten. Yeah. Something wrong, Chris? <laughs> no, no. It's flower acceptable. pot, or does it have a hat? <laughs> no, it's a flower pot. <laughs> well, I hope that answers both... some questions. <laughs> mathematical law. The mathematical law can include both, so that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just expanding my idea of hostile pigeon. <laughs> That's a good sentence. <laughs> Previously they were just grumpy, now I'm trying to give them reasons to be grumpy. Um, this one's covered in oil, so they've, they've turned into a ninja. They're throwing well, bo bottle cap shurikens and stuff. Obviously they've turned into a ninja. Well, they've got oil all over them, so they're, they're you know... Mm -hmm. They can hide in the shadows. Ah... Uh, yeah, I, I got wizard nonsense, so I'm just making weird shapes and going with whatever, <laughs> you know? As wizards do. <laughs> As wizards do. So, I don't know what the thinking is here. I think it is like they put a seed in a pot, and then the seed started growing, and it made this like weird wedding blob, which is also floating, and now it's just the other way around. <laughs> Nice. Don't question it too much. <laughs> I'm working from reference again, so I'm, uh, just kind of chiseling. Chisel away. Yee. I would work from reference, but I'm not entirely sure how many pigeons strike ninja poses. So. <laughs> I mean, limited. I'm pretty sure uh, uh, an impressive amount, if I'm to believe the memes. <laughs> Is that the next on the list? We've had the goose, we've had goats, we've had cats. Is it time for a pigeon game? Probably. I mean, it should have a long time ago. We need a pigeon game. <laughs> I mean, there's a pigeon dating game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah right. right. That makes sense. And it <laughs> has pictures of actual pigeons. Yeah, yeah, that uh, took me that back counts. to the well. <laughs> That well, I think I've said this before. I think I've said this before. Um, I think we talked about this before on stream, actually. Um, but that was the very first dating sim I ever saw. <laughs> that must have ifed you up. <laughs> I mean, it just, it just set the bar high, really. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. <laughs> Difficult to be shocked now. <laughs> Like, I guess spoilers for that game, and there is like a murder plotline in it as well. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, additional spoilers. Uh, the murder is yours. Yeah, yeah, you can be, I did you... watch that part because it's, it's a bit um, long. 
It well, depends. Also, there's multiple yeah. different ways that the story can go depending on who you interact with and when. But yes, there you you can play through the game and end up in a plot line where there is a murder plot and the murder is your murder. <laughs> Interesting. Again, and quick also, reminder, <laughs> you are a human, all of the and everyone else is characters a Characters are literally yes. portraits of birds, just like pictures of birds. So in this story, you do get murdered by a pigeon. Ooh, well, you yeah, can. I, I you mean, can. we had it coming if uh, <laughs> we get murdered by a pigeon. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> if you get I murdered mean, I feel by like a pigeon. pigeon Fun. Well, not for fun, for food. <laughs> who's food? Uh, Geek murder for fun. What naive schoolgirl who's just been transferred to a pigeon school wouldn't get themselves embroiled in a murder plot? Yeah, I don't know. One who didn't get themselves murdered? <laughs> well, technicalities. I'm sorry about my snifflies. It's okay. Oh, an sorry. additional nonsense with that game. Uh, the apocalypse has happened, and humanity is dead. Oh, oh wait, I, that's I didn't right. know that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's... What, the last human or something? Uh, essentially, it's wild. Just leave it at that. And, and still, <laughs> and still, plot wise, and still, game design and plot wise, the most notable point point of it is that they use actual pictures of actual birds instead of <laughs> anime people. Yep. That is uh, honestly a plus because it's what makes it hilarious. I've just thought of one of the worst things to Google, so I'm going to Google it. Nope, no, no! Don't share what you're googling. Are you on an FBI list now? <laughs> no, I might be on a list. Um, okay, no, that works. Yeah, okay. I, I, this is the internet. Mm -hmm. People huh? make the animal versions of human characters. I was wondering if anybody's made human versions of the pigeons in in that game. Uh, and they no, have. There's all sorts of and pictures they look of good. them as humans. I think there's even like a couple of official artworks, but. In in the game, they are just birds. I'm guessing all of the artworks makes more sense than a picture of a pigeon. Oh, good! My browser defaulted to safe search on. Cool. Nice. Um, <laughs> Thank goodness. Anyway, back to this. Back to this very important business. <laughs> very important business. Of pigeons. <laughs> I see now I'm imagining like a, a little pigeon mafia to go alongside the amphibian one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have much to do with the story, but you meet them occasionally. <laughs> and you can't talk to them, they're just pigeons, but, but yeah. they've got their own business going on. They're the rival gang and they do not want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> You meet them and you think, oh, a rival gang, I wonder if it's gonna be a plot line of, like, you know, we can join one gang or the other, and no, they they don't want you. <laughs> well, you're not a pigeon. Yeah, exactly. Can't join. You're not a pigeon. How oh, dare you? You can date them, but you can't join them. Okay. I'm like three drawings in, and I've already like completely lost whatever thread I was on. If I ever was. On. <laughs> I mean. Oh my goodness! I'm just zooming out for the first time. There's some good pictures. Got this little grumpy fluff. Yeah. Is that a hat or a potted plant? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pot. 
<laughs> Again, could be both. Could be both. But it's a pot. It depends whether whatever's in the pot is conscious enough to want a hat. I don't think it is. No. I just think you shouldn't <clears throat> eat it. <laughs> Fair enough. I love angry bubble so bear butt flower. <laughs> <laughs> Grump. What do they do? Do they just wander around the halls of the <laughs> wizard tower just being grumpy? Like, if, if the wizard tower doesn't get cleaned thoroughly enough, the fluff turns into that. Uh, probably. That would be fun. I mean, they do canonically have a janitor, so... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, one. He's <laughs> gonna yeah. do the whole bloody thing. <laughs> and he will always complain about it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know... He's just constantly being followed around by these guys who are <laughs> criticizing his work. <laughs> just the oh. worst dust bunnies. Yeah. <laughs> they form out of dust and then they criticize your cleaning. <laughs> it's the worst. So, fun thing I was reminded of uh, earlier in the week. So, I don't know whether it extends to other areas, but there is a tradition in at least part of the British Isles where bees are sort of part of the family and or possibly attached to the afterlife. So you have to, like, tell them when someone has died. Oh. Cool. Which... So, did somebody have to Blood tell the bees? royal bees? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally based off of a real-life thing, sort of. I remember there was a thing... I can't remember, something that, like... You could tell when it was midnight on a particular day because the bees would start buzzing at that time or something. But some weird things have been attributed to bees. Something being weird, it bees. I mean, bees are hmm. one of the few critters that we interact with who just sort of... Uh, we, we didn't really tame them, they just sort of decided to move in and go, yeah, sure, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah. gave them a slightly more solid home. We are like, you can do better than that, here you go. <laughs> and then we ruined its yeah. uh, previous home. Yeah, we'll collect rent. <laughs> you might feel sleepy We not really process. ruined their previous home, because the thing is, unlike with, like, pretty much every other animal, uh, if you want bees to do their bee thing, you can't there's nothing you can do to get them to just stay. Bees will just fuck off if they're looking at a high berry and go, yeah, this ain't working. <laughs> yeah, I I remember reading during uh, one of my history classes back in university, which was about animals in the Middle Ages. And there were, uh, like, legal records um, you know, of crimes related to animals. And one of them was related to bees, which was people stealing bees, and I was just really confused. Like, how... <laughs> like, how would you even do it? <laughs> and how would you trace that back to the point that you, <laughs> you know, can bring someone to court over it? <laughs> I, I guess stealing a hive would be easier than stealing a bee. Um, 
I mean, I guess you could steal the queen, but that's a very good way to get stung a lot if you just go through, <laughs> rummage around in a hive and take out just the queen. Yeah. And also, the queen isn't what makes the hive run. Like, we, we label it queen as it's like, oh, it's the ruler of the hive. No, it's it's the testicles of the hive. The hive will replace <laughs> the queen if the queen is not performing. That's one way of putting it. <laughs> You're not a queen, your balls. Yeah, so I was just really confused when I read that. Because <laughs> it brings up just all sorts of questions for me. But I thought it was really funny as well. It's like, here is a legal procedure for if someone is accused of stealing a bee. I mean, the other thing that tells you is if, so, pretty much, if there's a law involved, it's because yep. either it happened or someone was convinced enough that it would happen that they decided to write a law on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that either tells you that bee stealing was an actual problem, or people considered it enough of a potential problem to write a law anyway. And I don't know which is funnier. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't either. Well then, let's find out. <laughs> we asked a hundred people, which was funny. Ninety-eight percent of respondents said, "Who are you? Get out of my house." Sort of family feud, just weird B facts. <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought I thought you meant it was a weird episode of Family Feud where the top answer is get out of my house. <laughs> I'm calling the police. <laughs> that too. <laughs> One of our researchers went rogue this week. <laughs> Although it's always funny with those things where, because. A lot of the questions they ask their 100 people are subjective things, where it's just kind of like, there isn't really a correct answer for this. It's just common yeah, what do you things think that most you people think of. Say, yeah. But there are other things where it's like, no, there is an objective answer for this. Like, there was one episode where it's like, what is the largest state in the United States? And <laughs> the number one answer was Texas. Which is objectively wrong. Alaska is a lot larger. Yeah. Uh, it might be map projection, I guess. Gonna yeah. take your eye on that one. Well, I didn't know, because it's a town in America. I don't even know what the largest county in Britain is. I mean, I'm gonna guess it is like a thing of, like, if you look at a map of America, it's always, like, the whole United States, and then Alaska and Hawaii are off in a corner, and if you look at it based on that, <laughs> then Alaska is just as big as Hawaii, and that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. It's also sort of a matter of detail. So, my mm -hmm. mom grew up in New York, which is an older state with a lot of roads all over the place, so if you're looking at, like, a road map in an old road book, there's usual, usually multiple pages associated with it because you've got all of the details in the Manhattan area and then on Long Island and all throughout it. My dad grew up in New Mexico, which if you drive through most of New Mexico is mostly rubbery and desert and rocks. 
And so when they first went to go see my dad's folks in New Mexico, my mom looked at a state map to look at the roads that they needed to drive on and noticed that it was only one page in the book and went, oh, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> For those of you who oh, aren't no. aware, uh, New York is on the east side of the United States and most east side states are fairly small because of how mm -hmm. colonies were at the time. Yeah. New Mexico is on the west side of the United States. Most of the states on the west side of the United States are very large because they just sort of I'm cut them up into square. squares and went, fuck it. <laughs> so New yeah. Mexico is very large. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted, I wanted to try and work out what was the biggest county in Britain. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, I found a Wikipedia page, which is list of counties of England by area in 1831. And I'm wondering why that's a Wikipedia page. Um, but apparently the answer... Hurt my head. Uh, apparently, the largest one is North Yorkshire. I didn't realise Yorkshire was split up into two. Um, but that is according to the very reliable source of BigBangPokemon.com. Hold on. <laughs> Big Bang Pokemon. BigBangPokemon.com. Big Bang Pokemon. What happened there? <laughs> Why is almost Big every... Bang Pokemon the one that tells almost you that? Every, almost everything else on this website is about Pokemon, but for some reason they have a page which is what are the 10 largest counties in England. <laughs> Hi, Kiro. Welcome to BigBangPokemon.com. Um... Hi, Kiro. That's odd. Enough of that. Uh, let me give you the grand tour. Down here we have some angry pigeons and a cat plant. Over here we have some uh, grumpy uh, dust hamsters. It's something. Oh. It's a little dust creature that forms from dust in the Wizard Tower and then complains about your lack of cleaning. <laughs> yes. It's the, it's the only communication they are either capable of or want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Unclear. Um, <laughs> the wizards are still testing it out, but they won't give any other response, so, you know. Um, there is a, a blob that's outgrown and out-hovered its pot that it was being mm -hmm. grown in. And a cat in a bow tie, who I haven't mentioned yet, but looks very good. Thank you. Cat and I was in an anime mood. <laughs> it's very good. Yes, very good. We also have these. Which is also not, very good. I'm not sure what they are. What the, what's going on here? I don't know what this is, but it's cool. it is good. <laughs> I'm guessing it's mine. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I should specify. <laughs> I'm designing um, a vine monster. Ooh. Uh, it looks very pretty. Thank you. Because I was thinking the Golden City and like biblical shit, so. A grapevine, mm. and um, because vines was supposed to be like growing up the city walls and stuff, um, symbolism, yada yada yada. Yada yada. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and yonder we have the grump, grump stump with two grump potential stump. sizes of uh, referential uh, player characters. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know if it's better small. for them to be like really big or really small. Because initially I was thinking, um, so in <clears throat> Ocarina of Time, you've got the little statues that you can wear the uh, one mask in front of and they'll tell you things, like the little hint stone things. Oh, yeah. And in a lot of large RPGs, you have stump thing in an area that you can interact with that'll give either hints or lore or just like random bits so I figure having something like that within the forest where you probably don't have a whole lot of NPCs everywhere might be good but also I was like so should this be a stump that you can like sit on or should this be a stump where you look at it and go gee I'm so sure glad you can't sit on me <laughs> it's not don't sit on me it's don't sit on me well, if, if there's one thing I've learned from game development, 
it's, you know, feel free to take that asset, copy, paste it, and then resize it. That's true. You know, it's kind of fun in a game where you've, you've been seeing, like, lots and lots of small things. And then, like, 20 hours in, you come across one that's ten times bigger. It's, oh my god! It's a cool surprise. Like the, uh, crabs that you had with whichever Dark Souls it was that had the Pokemon mod on it. Uh, yeah, three. We have the little crab and the bee crab. Bee crab. Bee crab. Is it, were they first in Dark Souls 3? I guess they were. Because they were to have literally just copy-pasted into Elden Ring. They were like, we like these crabs, we're using them again. <laughs> But now they have friends, in the form of giant lobsters. <laughs> oh joy. They're worse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've the... no, I, th I think I did fight one once, and then I ran away from the rest of them. <laughs> the sentence they're worse being said in sudden, such an upbeat tone is... Uh... <laughs> they're much, much just... worse. Yeah, they're worse. Great. Oh, grape. <laughs> I'm drawing grapes. <laughs> <laughs> Context. Context. Grape. Bird <laughs> through the grape vine. I'm undecided as to whether or not this Pigeon Mafia should be, like, a, a force on the scale of the Amphibian Mafia, or whether it's, like, four pigeons in an alley who think they're more important than they are. Aww, that's so <laughs> cute, though. I mean, this I do kind of like people the... love them, and then they have to die, because that's how things work. Not in Via. Oh? In Via, everything survives, even the things you hate. Particularly the things you hate. Oh. <laughs> like the, um... Archaeologist. Mm-hmm. He always... I mean, we've already got goals that'll try and steal your lunch on the viaduct, so... I'm picturing like an 80s movie or 90s movie, School Bully, stealing lunch. Where's my 80s slice of life school comedy but with birds instead of people? Probably. I mean, it's a tofu boyfriend again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did just reinvent that game. Only with slightly less romance and slightly less murder. But um. anyway, anyway, how are you, Kira? Yeah. <laughs> Keep thinking of poison ivy for the viaduct. Makes sense. It's the ivy aduct. We'll just leave that statement there and move on. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hmm. You write these killing you, don't know why. Oh no. Try uh, telling it not to. We're not going to help with it. Uh have you told it the bullying is wrong? I left the room to blow my nose. Definitely not because of bad jokes. <laughs> Trying. Oh, that gets better soon. By soon, I mean now. Get better now, Nee. What'd you do to your knee? 
Uh, Kiro's knees, kind of thing. Oh. What did Kiro do to your knee? <laughs> uh, we don't know. Kiro does not know why it is that. Don't think it cares. Mm. Unfortunately, our resident knee expert um, is only an expert in headbutting them. <laughs> I thought you were about uh, to say and... he's only an expert in Neo. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we have an expert in Neo here, it's not me. <laughs> so... And if any of you are experts in Neo, I apologize for the past 20 streams. <laughs> Didn't do anything to it, just hurts a lot. Uh, you're elevating it though, which should help. Hopefully. I hear that's a good thing to do. You got an ice pack or anything? We could help. There's got those things that can to help alleviate discomfort, and they're always ice pack or heat pack. Well, make up your mind. Yeah. That's actually a thing with my arthritis that um, cleared up to me that and they always say with arthritis, um, you have to heat up uh, the joints because they're stiff and cold and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but then, as I've become an adult and I found out that actually cold feels real nice, um, I've talked to some people and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's a hot cold. It, it works uh, different for different people. Um, well. It's because it's doing different things depending on what is the issue. So, and also because like um, there's a lot of nerve damage and um, what's it called? The the thing where um, your um, the way you feel pain gets messed up with wrong signals and stuff because of uh, having chronic pain for so long that the whole system becomes like uh, confused. I think there is a word for that, but I'm blanking on what it is. I do yeah. understand what you're talking about, though. Nice. Few people do. But yeah, hot cold. Just just try it out and see what works. There's Whatever no works for you, biology's weird. Yeah. If it works for you, it works for you. Uh, that's not even the knee you usually have trouble with because of a sports injury when you were a teen. That's your left knee. This is completely new. Mm. Uh, yeah, also icing. Oh, oh, ice. Yes, sorry, I thought you... Like, cake <laughs> icing. Mm, cake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would also make you feel better, but... <laughs> Eat cake. <laughs> That's the solution. Have you considered eating cake? <laughs> Putting cake on your knee. That's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody on the internet who will claim that's a oh, useful absolutely. thing to do. If you look hard enough, everything is a solution. I'm always um, medical professionals, and um, other people have always told me to eat ginger for my arthritis. That'll cure it. Cure no, it. <laughs> I I don't know about art for arthritis, but ginger is one of those weird things where we keep doing scientific studies on it. And it keeps helping with various things, especially dealing with inflammation. And it's like, well, but why? Well, we're still trying to figure that out. But <laughs> yes, it is indeed working. So that's why it keeps getting listed as like the superfood for all sorts of things, especially well, might... dealing with things like inflammation. It's like ginger. Why? We don't know yet. We're still figuring it out. <laughs> Just eat it. <laughs> Just eat ginger. I did... Look, any excuse to have gingerbread. I'm on board. <laughs> much ginger and gingerbread though. I don't know if you're a coward. It's mostly syrup and honey. 
Yes, your point being. <laughs> and? And he's good for a sore throat, so... Syrup is just nice. <laughs> Syrup is a necessary evil. It's fine. So I've been sketching these shapes in for like a weeping willow type thing, but I think I've made Ooh. just like a weird ghost. Ooh. Why not both? With like hands. Yeah. And like... yeah Ghosts are I always humans. Make yeah. them trees. Merch. Merch really? ideas. <laughs> I love it. <gasps> Who's this? Oh, look at him! <laughs> <gasps> oh! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, hello, Smudge. Oh. I didn't realize that was the butt flower size. <laughs> it's this name now, by the way. It's but. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Completely separate etymological derivation, but. <laughs> what flower? Named after. I mean, the... if it is, if it is essentially a dust bunny made. Given, I, I hate to say sentience, but you know, given speech. <laughs> I imagine they wouldn't be that big unless you just left the dust bunnies for too long. Like Which, <laughs> it does beg the question of, okay, yeah, they speak, but what do they sound like? Are they high pitched? Are they really low pitched? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Are, they, are they squeaky? Are they sort of like scratchy? Mm. Do they sound like they've got asthma and the room is just covered in dust? <laughs> <laughs> No. I mean, I I don't think that because it does have to be clear that they are criticizing your inability to clean. <laughs> so they do have to, you know, it can't be too too much wheeze in there. Oh my goodness. That's a big pigeon. <laughs> I I do like that both for the pigeon mafia and the amphibian mafia we went like mafia boss wide. <laughs> wide. <laughs> what well, just has to be wide. wide. Pelican? Technically, yes, but they were brought up by pigeons, so they think they're a pigeon. Oh. <laughs> they're not an asshole. God, a pelican that behaves like a pigeon would be a nightmare. <laughs> Imagine you're just eating, and suddenly there's like a pelican at your feet. <laughs> horrifying. You could fill their entire beak up with chips and still be hungry. Yeah. Very powerful pigeon friend. <laughs> I like the idea that they also they also act as the group's getaway vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like, we've been caught. Get in, get in. And then they all just jump into the beak and they fly off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's silly.
Yeah, Gero. Kingpin's mafia bosses have to be white. That's the rule, apparently. Well, <laughs> That's how you see, they're important. <laughs> something about width is intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> they can block a door, stop you leaving. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's also because, like, it's it is intimidating, but it's not the first thing of thing you think of when you think of like an intimidating body shape. You know, it's not like uh, you know the intimidation of like physical strength. It's more just like the intimidation that like a roadblock has. <laughs> <laughs> Of just you're not getting away, and you know it immediately as you look at it. <laughs> intimidation, intimidation of a roadblock. <laughs> Don't know if that's a turn or not. <laughs> like with yesterday, why why run into a wall when you can have the wall run into you? Yeah, yeah. That that reminds me of. Um... Oh, I was called something different in America. As I should have also pointed out at the time when I mentioned family fortunes as family feud in America. Um, robot Wars. What's that called in America? Battle I don't bots? know. You probably call it something different in America. <laughs> anyway, a little thing where people make little robots and they fight. Um, in Britain, the uh, I, I remember watching this as a kid. I haven't thought about this show for bloody ages. Um, and the one that the robot that consistently won, like the first, I don't know how many series, um, was called Roadblock, and it was made of like old traffic signs. Um, and it's the one on the front was just Roadblock. Um, but all it was, it was just it was just a ramp. And the reason it kept winning is because everything just kept driving up it and falling off. And it couldn't do anything. It's just a ramp. <laughs> well, okay, that's one way. Again, it's sort of. There were, nobody bothered oh. to build a robot that would be able to attack the floor. <laughs> so. I don't know if it's oh, called anything in the United that. States. Cause it looks like Robot Wars is literally the name of the competition on British television. Yeah, like I say, it's probably... I don't know if it's a thing. I, I, I think BattleBots is a thing in America. I don't know if it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, we've got some stuff like that. The, uh... Oh, at least one of the... Um... My brain is not functioning. I'm sorry. This Myth is a via stream. It's, it's unnecessary. One of the Mythbusters guys had done a couple of robot battle competitions, uh, and... After a while, it was just kind of like, can you just retire your robot, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. Because I think it, like, it spun. And it spun so fast and so hard that basically anything that touched it would just get furled away from the force. At high speeds and possibly in chunks. Possibly in chunks. <laughs> There's always like the worst thing about that show is that people spend so much time on these things and then they go in and then inevitably it just gets completely obliterated within five seconds. <laughs> You're like, oh. You tried real hard on that. Particularly if there's like a kid in the team. Like it was a family thing. Aww. Yeah, that's why I sort of prefer the ones where it's like less where the robots are fighting and more we're making the robots to try and do a task. Yeah. Because, I mean, they still might break, but that's... The point of it isn't to break them. The point of them is to get them to, like, climb on top of an object or put out a candle or go through a maze quickly. Oh, that would be fun. Like a kind of cooperative show where it's like you don't know what the tasks are going to be but the idea is to make a group of robots that, that would be able to kind of together do anything that might be kind of neat <laughs> I 
Yeah, we've got... So we've got some, like, school robot clubs and whatnot that sometimes happen. And I know this because um, some of my co-workers' kids were in them, so I get to hear about it. And what usually happens for the competitions is they know beforehand what the tasks are going to be. And they have to design robots to do it, but they're put into teams with other schools and they don't necessarily know what the other school is uh, going to do and make. Uh, but they've got, like, a time limit. So, like, after a certain point, they they can't do anything more with hardware. And after a certain point, they can't do anything more with software. And while they can do some maintenance at the competition, they can't do, like, major changes. So that was always interesting. I don't know how leaves work. I don't know how anything works, really. Uh, things work. Imagine a hand, but very, very webbed. You're asking me to draw a hand? <laughs> but very webbed, so you don't have to draw the fingers. Drawing a hand without the fingers is really easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's flop. Oh, should specify, for the purposes of both politeness and legal obligation. Um, the music today is given is brought to us by Adrian Von Ziegler. Everyone give a thank you. And Everybody you say thank you to Adrian Von Ziegler. Thank you, Adrian Von Ziegler. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> I quite like it. one of the things he's sort of doing. I occasionally get like um, community updates on YouTube, people posting community stuff. And one of the things he seems really in into and trying to like get people interested and excited about is he just made. Oh yeah, there's a there's a there's a command. Kira has kindly reminded us that there is a command. And by us, I mean me. Um, You're the one who made the command. I've done loads of things I've forgotten. I can't give an example for obvious reasons. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, he, he he made a fictional language. Ooh. Um. And is just very excited about trying to, to show people and like, oh, this is this is how you can write things in this language and like a little fantasy thing. And this is how you can do names. And... I like it when people have things like that. Because it's like, there is no way this, this you can commercialize this. This is purely a passion project, and I like it when people have stuff like that. Yeah. Do, is people doing things purely because they just really, really want to do it? No other incentive. What would a viney face look like? A viney face? Yeah. I'm imagining something like that's very wrinkly, sort of. Yeah. Using that as a starting point. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody who's very wrinkly. I keep thinking of John Hurt. He wasn't that wrinkly, was he? Ooh. Very textural face. Uh, yeah, it's not that ring. Well, kind of. That's an interesting description. His face has texture. It does. Uh, look, look, here's a picture of John Hurt. Well, here's a, there's a picture of John Hurt. Look, his face has texture. See what I mean? 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Also thinking of, and <laughs> I don't want to dredge up any um, past memories of things. Uh, oh, I, I have already scared Christy away. I posted a single picture of Angela Lansbury and Christie's run away. <laughs> Whoops. Well, until then, everybody say nice things about Christie. His art's very, very good. It is! Rusty can paint so well, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Just imme immediacy of form and colour. Just like, here's some colours. Yeah. I'm gonna mess around with the colours. Oh, I have a thing that's solid and real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's just like, I... I have... It, it, it's like the perfect... I mean, it's just like how you're supposed to paint, and then it immediately, like, very quickly comes together. I am. Ha I have a very tough time with that because I do a lot of line art and such. <laughs> so it's it's so fun to see with Christie's art to just see all these forms come together in what it is supposed to be, and it's just really good. <laughs> I did the thing again where I closed oh. this board. She's back! We've got to shut- we've got to stop. Ah! <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> okay. I, I thought you ran away because I pasted a picture of Angela Lansbury. Ah! Uh. <laughs> it's almost October. <laughs> it's time! <laughs> Might finish it this year. <laughs> Time isn't real anyway. <laughs> yeah, time's an illusion. October challenge is doubly so. Yeah. Doesn't say which year, which October. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just, you just do one every October. Yeah. A 31 year project. <laughs> Nobody said you couldn't. <laughs> Okay here's, okay, here's what you do, right? Every year you make a calendar. And each month, the art for that month is a piece of art for one of these monthly challenges. <laughs> <laughs> and then after, well, I guess after 28, well, I guess you'd have to do 29 to sort of accommodate for the possible leap year. Um, after that many years, you would have done February's challenge. And then you would get a bunch in 30s, get a bunch in 31. You'll get there. It'll just slowly get easier. <laughs> I mean, it's a good year, way to just produce a lot of art, because you're just constantly yeah. doing a challenge. <laughs> yeah. You're doing, like, all of the challenges. Like, Cuba, yeah, well... Mermaid, Inktober. What was the... What's the? What was the word? <laughs> I'm trying to remember what the really, really awkward monthly challenge was. We found a list of all the monthly challenges, or a bunch of monthly art challenges. We're just looking at all the names. There was a particularly awkward one. Yeah. There was one that was like sort of Lycanthroctober or something like that, <laughs> which was. <laughs> Uh, hang on. <laughs> uh, uh, July Canthropy. July Canthropy, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that is a little awkward. Doesn't quite <laughs> roll off the top. 
Oh yeah, there was also fairyary, which I fairy, fairyary, fairy, which really annoyed me because I was like, February is right there, like. Yeah. There were so many of these that were just like, there are better ways of doing this name. Mm hmm. I liked Kai July. That one was good. It's better than July Canthropy. Yeah. Kai uh, July just sounds fun. E. Kai July. Uh, wasn't there one for January? Probably. Um. There's Creechuenry. <laughs> that, that I still cannot pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> See, the main one I'm aware of is Mermaid, but that's because yeah, yeah. I guess I follow a lot of artists who are like, Mermaids! I mean, it is like one of the more like well-known ones, I think. Just in general. Yeah, Mermaid I think was probably like, the second one I came across after Inktober. Yeah. Me too. Alas, I have no interest in Mermaid, so I haven't done it. Speaking of monthly art challenges, where has been doing Sword Timber, which is yes, yeah. <laughs> Just shout out to Weird, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Weird. Everybody goes a whole lot of Weird. Or is it not dead yet? Um, I can't remember what the Twitter handle is. Well, they got an Instagram as well. I think it's whole lot of Weird on Twitter. Whole underscore lot of Weird on Instagram. <laughs> Yes, they've been doing a monthly thing about swords. Yes, it's a whole lot of weird um, on Twitter. With only the first W not capitalized of the words. It's whole not capitalized, then the L in lots is capitalized, then there's just off, and then there's weird with the W capitalized. <laughs> whole lot of weird. <laughs> This has reminded me that I forgot to post something today, so I should do that after the stream. Um, <laughs> but other than that, yeah. Challenges. Challenges. And then, of course, next month, got a whole next bunch of stuff month. going on. Yes. And everyone's going to see that I've been drawing anime. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, not the one you're thinking of. <laughs> mm. I did sketch that one, and then I sketched a nut for another anime, and then I lined that one. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to how I do things. <laughs> it's probably better than the way I'm going about it. <laughs> I just wanted to draw Buddy as a basketball boy, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. We, we did... You do have a lot of very different styles to work with, so... Yeah. Whatever works. I mean, it also immediately got me thinking I need to watch this <laughs> <laughs> But I don't want to. But I want to, because... <laughs> I, I want to for one character, but that character is like five for five episodes in season two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, Kroken and Buzz. Yeah. <laughs> you thought of another style that could be fun, but you'll try to remember it for next time. Ooh, what's that? Ooh. I mean, you can just say it and I'll put it on my list and then yeah. I'll just have it on my list for whenever I'm feeling like I want to do a style. But, yeah. I, It was also, like, the thing I was... I was thinking about the character earlier and then I was like, that might be, like, the first instance where my brain completely, like, lashed on the most trashy character because <laughs> <laughs> I was obsessed with that character when I first 
started watching like anime <laughs> and it's <laughs> he's not a good person <laughs> It's also the first time I made a Pokemon team for a fictional character. That's where that started as well. <laughs> With that character. It's also the reason why I got attached to Spinarax, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was really into that character. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Sorry, Kira is suggesting v vanilla wear. Vanilla. Which, I, I love mean, these potted plants. Sorry. <laughs> very <laughs> strange piece of artwork that I got as my first result, which I won't show. Ooh. <laughs> it's a very interesting style. I'll put it in the list just to be. Every game by Vanillaware ranked. I'm sure that'll be 100% accurate. I'm not <laughs> at all opinionated. Um, no, 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 no. Speaking of accuracy, should we spin wheels? Yeah. Yeah. Let's spin some wheels. Spin some wheels. I was thinking, so I, we were talking about this. Um, this idea of going around the wheels twice. Oh, Frame Man has joined just for the wheels. <laughs> Exciting times. Hey Matt, calm down. Shh, shh, it's okay. It's okay. They're just wheels. I know they're buggy, and I know you're excited about bugs. <laughs> but yes, we were talking about going around the wheels twice, and then doing like a kind of mini draw through, just to kind of settle everything up, actually to like work out the story of this game. Um, By doing the wheels twice? It, 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 there's a story I thought we just had spaghetti. <laughs> Well, the idea being is that now we've done we've done it twice. Everybody's had the same place twice. Um, we've got enough stuff to be working with, and then the next bunch of streams would be story, and we'd oh. we'd work with what we've made. Um, but anyway, point being is that I think this will be the twentieth spin. Um, unless I'm very much mistaken, I might be. To be fair, um, if so, this might be the last one. I don't know how numbers work. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gina Chief has an obsession over this trash man. Karen Chief is still not over. Oh. He, he has uh, smoke coming out of his eyes. <laughs> and fingernails. It happens, you know. Is he okay? Um, <laughs> I mean, there is this uh, weird thing in the anime that's called The Zone. Um and it has like weird special effects on because it's an anime you know it's an anime yeah that's all you need to know it's an -an 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 so all you need all you need to know is that it's anime and that guy objectively sucks and i love it <laughs> <laughs> as well you must not to um, not to be confused with the other character that objectively sucks, whom I hate. <laughs> <laughs> it has As to you suck also in a very specific way. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> he needs to look like this. <laughs> uh, and have a spider law. thing going on. <laughs> Ooh, law. Law. Wrapping things up. Exactly. <clears throat> Backstory. Um, four places. Uh, <laughs> Christy, you have the viaduct. <laughs> Which, I mean, to be fair, the, the, my original standpoint was like, this thing has been around for longer than anyone can remember. So, who knows the sort of things that have happened on it? Yeah. Um, Ragdoll has uh, the Chibi's Caves. There's a bunch of stuff going on in there. Um, Clamps has Floating City. Lewis has Harper City. Kira has wizard nonsense. Wizard law. Go Kira. <laughs> go Kira. Where, where do they come from? Where do they go? They um, come from Kotobajo. 
Uh, Oobs gets uh, the abyss. Everybody can do the Golden City. Mm. The law thereof. Ghosts in armor. Which is probably going to be mm. quite important to the actual plot of the game, I imagine. Probably. Um, I get the forest. Again, there's a bunch of stuff there. There's the people who live in the forest. There's the, the dilapidated city inside it, etc. Jeeb gets limbo, which is also very important. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot going on there. Uh, well, actually, there's not a lot going on there, and that's kind of the point. Um, work, work as you will. And Dark gets the entire world, so... Hey, Dark, do you want to write? You want to write the story? <laughs> Dark, Dark's job is to write the opening title crawl. Uh, the entire background of the game. Make the game pamphlet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little manual. When we're going to have a character in this called Emmanuel, who was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Emmanuel. Give... I can't remember. I've lost track of all the jokes we made about. <laughs> we should write I mean, these down. Have, I've forgotten, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Chibi's posting more trash people. For the sake of anybody <laughs> watching the VOD, this is this is good trash man. <laughs> and this is bad trash man. <laughs> it's important, okay. Important distinction. One of them has more colour. One of them has more colour. <laughs> Which we might now understand where Chibi's preference of colour scheme comes from. <laughs> Listen! <laughs> I based a lot of my personality <laughs> on this character, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no judgment, you like what you like. People liking yeah, things is good. Spider thing. <laughs> <laughs> is this part <clears throat> the artist doing bleach? What? Because that's bleach. That's Ichigo. I mean, mm. after a certain point, it's just attractive male high school dude <laughs> from anime number five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it is a specific style as well. The elongated head and small eyes and stuff. Mm. I mean, that's just inherited from, like, you know, ukiyo-e and traditional Japanese art. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, Kira says, wizards are going to do what wizards want to do and no one can stop them. That is a good starting point for law. <laughs> Thank you, Kira, for admitting that you also put way too much of your personality <laughs> into a trash man. <laughs> uh... Trash man. <sighs> That's fair. Um, oh, but... the other way around. I made one out of yeah. my personality. <laughs> um... He is also the guy of which I get, like, merch every time I go to a con. I try yeah. to find merch of him. Which is, like, again, he is someone who is in, like, five episodes of season <laughs> two. It's impressive. Somehow, yeah, somehow I still find new merch every time I go. I don't know how. <laughs> Some personality. I have no idea how I find it every time because <laughs> you will he it into is not existence. one of the main characters at all, and there are a lot of main characters. <laughs> Clearly, you're not the only one who is um, enthralled by them. Yeah, you need to find out who's selling this. Thing. Is it the same person? Um, I mean, you might have a friend. <laughs> I mean, it just comes from, you know, stands at a con, so, you know, it's it's not like, uh... <laughs> you say that as if they magically appear. Yes, they do! <laughs> These are grown on stands, you see. <laughs> it's a <laughs> pit. Fans still like side characters, absolutely. After this stream, I'll collect all my merch together and make a picture of it. 
I'm trying to think of, of, of like... Little Mud like a little family. I'm trying to think of like obscure side characters that there would be somebody who's the, that's their favourite. Um, all I'm thinking of is the, the weird gimp hippos in Final Fantasy IX. <laughs> <laughs> what? We, we've talked about them before. <laughs> Um, I, mean, I probably th th they're so it, incidental. I probably wouldn't even draw them in the draw through. But yeah, but yeah. I mean, fans still like side characters, but again, like Kroko no Basuke is an anime with so many main characters and so many side characters that it's like if you love a side character, it's it's nearly impossible because there are like seven very very important characters and then there's seven sidekicks to all those very very important characters who get all the merch but then somehow this guy just keeps getting in there <laughs> i don't know why he keeps getting included I'm trying really hard to think of, I mean, it is has been years since I've watched anime regularly, but any side character that I've ever obsessed about, I just can't think of any. I'm like, I know I've watched anime, <laughs> but where did it go? Not in my I guess brain. The... I, I I guess when I was younger, I used to really like Reno from Final Fantasy IX. Sorry, Final Fantasy VII. Um, that that would be what do we call him? Rabbit Jesse. Reno. 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 I, mean, I guess I mean... it helps. I'm sorry. No, no. I didn't mean to cut you off. Do not be sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> We interrupted each other. You go first. I, I was just looking at pictures of Kuroko's basketball and I thought to myself it probably helps that he's like one of the characters who is pretty much color-coded because everyone is color-coded. <laughs> Not exaggerating. <laughs> Kuroko's basketball is very color-coded. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the main characters. They're all like um for uh everyone except for the dude on the left, it's pretty much that the color they're representing is in their name. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's very, very Oh, they're color coded, color coded. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I was like nah, and then I saw the picture. Oh. Um like uh with the dark blue dude, his name is like uh, Ao Mine, and then Ao is blue. So, you know, it's included in the name. So the first one is Aka something? Uh, no, except for the left. Um, oh yeah, you said that. Yeah, uh, the left one isn't color card, and then the light blue one is... His thing is like that he is a shadow, so he has like... Uh, shadow <laughs> references. <laughs> but other than Why? that, it's like, um, let's see if I can remember. Um, it's Kise, so I believe Ki is yellow. Uh, Midorima, uh, Midori is green. Aumine, Ao is blue. Uh, Murasaki Bara, uh, Murasaki is purple, and then, um, Akashi, and then it's red. It's one of the things. I don't remember. I would say that's pink, but yeah. Yeah, but he's, you know, more red. Okay. Of the, like, because the, um, the ones I just named are all part of, like, the quote-unquote generation of miracles, and they're, like, <laughs> supposed to represent the rainbow, and he's, like, the red... <laughs> version of that. <laughs> He's like the color red in that. <laughs> so, the one of the one things I knew in Japanese, I should have just gone to the other side. 
Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Also, why, Chris? <laughs> it, it's a discovery I made that people keep <laughs> deep faking Willem Dafoe's face onto every Final Fantasy character for some reason. <laughs> Reno is apparently no exception. My icon in Discord is Steiner from FF9. <laughs> well, it's just the thing. So well. so do you pick a, you pick a character from a Final Fantasy game? They've, it's it's happened to them. <laughs> It's happened to them. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I've, I've thought of a cursed one. <laughs> yeah, Kira, the first one is Kagami Taiga. Uh, you're right. You did it. Did you find the cursed one? Hmm. I'm disappointed so far. <laughs> I've had other characters from that one, but it just happened. You just type in anything to do with Final Fantasy, it's in there. Willem Dafoe. It spreads through like a virus. Um No, okay, well, Lulu has escaped. Good job, Lulu. <laughs> They couldn't do that to him. I'm surprised. That's the first well, one I would have gone for. <laughs> her. Lulu is the block maid from Final Fantasy X. Oh. Who has uh, very many belts. <laughs> so many belts, they make a skirt. A skirt is made of belts. That sounds like the most uncomfortable thing in the world. It doesn't look great. I, mean, I, I tried to come it up with an idea right. for a. a <laughs> I tried to come up with an idea for a why we didn't finish Final Fantasy X, and all, all, all it kept evolving into is just Malachi tripping over belt skirts. That was it. <laughs> and no, I'm no. not even joking about the uh, so many belts it makes sort of. I shouldn't be searching for this in <laughs> during a stream. <laughs> we got, we spun the wheel and then I just went off the rails immediately. I mean, I had a, I had, I have a significant idea for this, but I have been derailed. Um, okay, well, Lulu, you have you have escaped unscathed by the Willem Dafoeness. No more power. Sheed. Oh, is your pen run out of power? Yeah. Oh. Well, this um, <laughs> probably just has to go without a description. You love him even though he gives somebody a knee injury on purpose. Did this person give Kiro a knee injury? <laughs> Kiro, <laughs> can you identify this man? Have you seen this person? <laughs> Have you it's seen so this? Send him to me. <laughs> this is right after. <laughs> like, oh, hey, Lewis! Hi, Lewis! Hello, how's it Lewis? How's it Lewis? How is Lewis? <laughs> is Lewis knee <Neil>, alright? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go blow my nose again. Ah. <clears throat> He's asleep, you don't know what happened. <laughs> mm. Maybe Trashman was there. He visits you in I the hope night not. And injures your knee. <laughs> That'd be really weird. <laughs> Just breaks into your wrist. I was trying to come up with like a combination of Krampus and kneecap, and it's not working. Um. <laughs> I'm rolled off the red nose reindeer. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Good, waking up slowly, but banishing the jet lag. Good, good. Yeah. It will pass. Time will catch up with you. Or you will catch up with time. No, it's time that's the problem. It's always time that's the problem. No, it's the time who are wrong. <laughs> um. Yeah, so we got some stuff here. We got the fluff. The creatures made of magic fluff. Um, things that don't want to be in this plant pot anymore. Uh, vines with grapes being evil. Ooh. Uh, it wants you to pick one of the grapes and it'll grab you with its fingies. Oh, no. Mm. It's, a, it's a trap. <laughs> a vinous a fly card. trap. No, I can't scroll. I can't see your beautiful pictures because my pen isn't working. No. <laughs> no. Um, um, uh, mm. Does, does vi Vinus Guy Trap? Does that work? <laughs> Not really. Vinus <laughs> Guy Trap. <laughs> it is now. That's the name. It's the best Vi I can do on short notice. Um. <laughs> It's at least funny. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly at most. Um, do have several KNB manga in the next uh, room right next door. KNB. Is that the thing that that's from? Yeah. I, mis I misread it as KND, which made me think of kids next door. Which is not <laughs> what you're talking about. Um, they're also gangster birds. But other than that. Um... We haven't really commented on these little friends as well. Mm. We shouldn't feed. And this one really, really wants food. <laughs> Don't feed it. There's one you can feed and the other one you can't, but it's not the one you think. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a puzzle. <laughs> There's a plant that just happens to grow into something that resembles a do not feed sign, but it, is, it really should feed it. <laughs> it's an unfortunate evolutionary quirk. <laughs> feed, Miss Seymour! It's so hungry. I played Seymour in a school production of Little Shop of Horrors. I remember nothing of it. Um... But yeah, I I now imagine there's like a wizard in a tower who has, just has like a room full of potted plants that are very questionable of origin <laughs> and absurd. But <laughs> very absurd, yes. I I love oh, the acrobatics. <laughs> I love I love the acrobatics that my brain takes during those sentences of like that sounds like an amazing thing to draw. Wait, hang on, room full of plants. <laughs> <laughs> Individual potted plants. Yeah. <laughs> Very viney and leafy flowers. With all the petals. Currently Way different colours. How did that go? Yeah. A little you ingredient. Something like that. <clears throat> yeah. Also, um, who's this poor fellow to the right of the um, chunky mafia? The who? The um, rightmost pigeon. Oh, they're they're part of the. That's the one you don't mess with. <laughs> oh, that's the one you don't talk to. Them, <laughs> they're rather skittish and they have a nail. <laughs> it's a nail. I thought they might be wizard uh, nonsense as well. No, just a nail. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> No, a nail and no one. concept of safety. Uh, bye, Kiro. Oh, yeah, you gotta go. Bye. bye. Hopefully, your knee gets better. Yeah. Oh, bugger! I should have mentioned that I have I have Kiro's area as law. <laughs> I should have <laughs> probably talked about it while they were here. Um. But yeah, I had an idea. I guess Lewis is here as well. It also ties in. Quick thought. The civilization that was in the forest that then died out and turned to ruin. Or whatever happened mm -hmm. to them. We didn't really sort of specify what happened to them. Is it 
implausible that whatever it was that caused that sort of mass. Maybe it was an exodus. Maybe it was a death. If it was death, could they be the civilization that somehow got back and made the Golden City? As it were, they all died. They turned to ghosts, lost memory of their previous lives, and then were like, well, let's make this place. <laughs> that would be fun. I mean, it also wouldn't surprise me if, because uh, we've got some old tech stuff both in the floating city and in the middle of the forest and wherever the golden city is. It wouldn't surprise me if it was all sort of from the same time frame potentially. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. With so many, like, like the ruins and the lost civilization and, like, whatever is going on with the Golden City, it does, like, imply a sort of, like, catastrophic event at some point. Yeah. <laughs> like, even if they... <clears throat> even if the Golden City people aren't, like, from the civilization in the forest, it, then there still was another civilization that somehow died out and got brought back to life. Well, not brought back to life, but they decided I'm not gonna I, die. <laughs> but I, I feel like maybe it's like whatever that catastrophe was is also the catalyst that allowed them to make that decision. To make the decision of yeah. like, yeah, I'm not gonna die. <laughs> yeah, and like life and death sense. are like, hey, you can't do that. Why did this yeah. happen? That or sounds right. This all making sense. Well, if we're coming up to writing a story, my brain's automatically like, mm, how do I fit this all together? <laughs> Take components, it, smush together like child with jigsaw. It, it it does make sense to for there to be like one big catastrophic event that simultaneously caused civilizations to die out, and for one to like stay behind, kind of. Even though they're not supposed to, and it just messes everything up. <laughs> I like this. That's, that's a very fun idea. Yeah. And I need to draw something that represents that. <laughs> it's also it's like some things to grab hold of in the law now. Hmm. Yeah. Central, like, th 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 that particular event can sort of help tie a whole bunch of things together in terms of like yeah. you know explaining anything <laughs> and the character finding these learning these things at certain points of the story and yeah whether that it, affects it, their actions I don't and know. if anything doesn't make sense in the end it's just wizard nonsense uh, <laughs> breaking the fourth wall and being like whatever move on we, we can literally use the excuse of a wizard did it. Yeah, yeah a wizard did it. <laughs> they do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I think in this instance, maybe a wizard didn't do it. Maybe, maybe, oh no, maybe there is a wizard. Maybe there's a wizard we don't meet, but is mentioned in the story and that they were the person who made the thing that caused everything to go wrong. There's a fabled mm. wizard. Which they do not talk about. Yeah. They, they failed their PhD defense on account of the <laughs> apocalypse happening. <laughs> <laughs> what a disastrous viva. <laughs> they they came up to give their final dissertation, but it turns out their final dissertation caused the apocalypse, so they just automatically failed. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the idea of the the um that wizard that caused the apocalypse. They are talked about, they're just not talked about as the cause of an apocalypse, they're talked about as a failed student. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, like, you, really connects the dots, the dots you, the you, later. <laughs> you hear about the cause of the apocalypse and you know as a wizard, and you hear about this wizard who failed there. It, it, it takes a while for anybody to admit they were the same yeah. person. <laughs> Are you back? Hi, Gero. Gero. Hi, Gero. Uh, long story short, we're thinking that the cataclysm that caused the ruin of the civilization in the forest is the same thing that caused people to be able to come back from the dead and the people who were in the golden city may or may not be the people who were in the forest but who have died and turned into spirits and yeah and the, the idea basically it. is like there's there was one like basically an apocalypse caused by a wizard 
which caused um, whatever happened to the people from the Golden City to die, which caused the civilization in the forest to die out and was also the cause for like whatever happened in the ruins. So it's just like mass death, kind of. <laughs> mass extinction? Mass extinction, thank you. <laughs> See, but is it um, funnier for the wizard to have done it on purpose or the wizard was doing dissertation things and then <laughs> then it just caused oh, the apocalypse to accidentally happen? The, 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 there is literally a single condition under which you can lose your PhD, and it is an apocalypse happens. <laughs> <laughs> and they were so worried about making that not happen that they caused it to happen. They made, like, it, it was like the thing of, like, they their, like, calculation was off by, like, a, like, you know, they did, like, They a... didn't carry the one. <laughs> it, it, like, something stupid like that. It was like one minor mistake in the cal calculation. <laughs> and since then, all the wizards have forgotten calculation. Yeah, there's no more maths and wizards. Wizards were mathematicians. <laughs> this caused the extinction no, of a civilization and maths. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least for wizards. <laughs> and now all the building buildings are crooked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No right angles. The wizards refuse to have wizard engineers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no more wizard engineers. Euclidean mathematics was destroyed in that apocalypse, and now not, there are no such thing as right angles. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. At wonky. least as far as the wizards are concerned. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the rest of the world just, you know, went on normally with straight buildings, but the wizards were like, no. <laughs> No oh, more. so like the the wizard's tower is right angles to wizards. <laughs> That's correct. Yes. Oh, they, oh, oh, so they're perceiving like a different yeah geometry. They see into another dimension or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do have the possibility of the wizard tower just sort of snaking its way around town, so it's just that I the, the angles that. that it's at are just whatever <laughs> angles it's decided to fall asleep at. <laughs> I don't know the idea of a tower falling asleep. Um. <laughs> Something of like a Vicna thing, like slithering around town and uh, just uh, taking over buildings. <laughs> this is Wizard Tower now. <laughs> keep thinking of Stargate and how the good guys keep breaking things. Yeah. Why do you, do you, do you, hmm. There's a thing I, I encounter it largely on Tumblr. I'm sure it exists elsewhere. Of like humans are space orcs. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that is definitely the thesis of Stargate. <laughs> so we've got the Asgard, and they're like, oh, we're fighting these these people but they're using this this weaponry that it like uses like physical properties to like it, it, things like hit things and explode and you, we are too smart to understand this so so can you help us <laughs> humans are idiots yes you're stupid enough Correct. to still actually understand ballistics please explain yeah i mean i'm more a fan of the tumblr theory story that like humans are space cats <laughs> what? You get one or the other. We can't be cats and orcs. <laughs> orcs. Not with that kind of attitude, you can't. <laughs> well, cats are gremlins, I guess, but. Yeah, of just, you know, we have our own little rituals that don't make sense and. We just do what we want. <laughs> Humans do do that. There, there were a couple of threads going around with uh, dealing with Star Trek stuff, where basically the the idea is that it's like, okay, well, if you've ever watched like the original series, there's a whole bunch of wacky nonsense that happens at that, and the the thesis of the thread is essentially it's like, no, that's that only happens with human ships. Everyone else just goes out and has, like, normal exploration adventures. <laughs> it's just human ships that do weirdness, like tear holes through time and space. <laughs> and 
and no one really knows how they do it because anytime they ask a human about it, they just go, oh yeah, we that just happens. And then everyone else is like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> Sir? It makes me think of a uh, Magiplier in space. Oh, I need to I need to do that at some point. It's actually really good. It's I still have the heist. <laughs> still haven't bloody done the original yeah. one. Space is much better. Okay. Mm. Definitely watch that one. You yeah, haven't watched Space, space Eater yet. <laughs> I have to do that. It's really fun. There's a lot of choices. Anyway, I found a Tumblr post about yeah. humans being space cats for anyone who wants to read it. <laughs> <laughs> the Tumblr is, is, I needed a place for alien posts. I, I like, know a lot of the time we are considered space orcs or Australians. What? <laughs> <laughs> Australians <laughs> are human orcs, of the Earth orcs. I think they mean as in like, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, Tumblr also had a thing of like humans are space Australians because we come from a place that is considered like highly dangerous by aliens of like living like living in a place that has like like super various like temperatures where like there's lots of wild animals that can kill you that kind of thing. <laughs> Mm. I, I, <laughs> the sentence I, is living near volcanoes <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> I prefer I prefer the idea that Australians are Earth orcs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I uh, talked over you, Chris. It's just that uh, sprung out to me. Then, so I know some of the. There were some writers who latched onto the humans or space orcs things and actually put together an anthology book on that. I have a copy of it around here. Ah, oh, here it is. Humans Wanted. I'm just going to link the Goodreads thing. That's the first one that came up that wasn't Amazon. <laughs> oh, God. That's a lot of writers. Not on there. Go away. Leave. Oh, yeah, it's Leave. an anthology. <laughs> so it's a bunch of short stories written by a bunch of different writers. I've recognized none of those names, but that's unsurprising because I don't read it. Uh, but cool. Oh. Hmm. Readers also enjoyed Humans Are Weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we are. Yeah. That's why you keep getting posts like humans are space orcs and space cats and space Australians. <laughs> it's just, I love that it's... <laughs> it's space orcs or Australians, not space orcs or space Australians. <laughs> it's just Australians, you know? <laughs> I mean, technically in English, you could imply that that descriptor applies to everything in the sentence, but since there's only two things in the sentence, and also Australians are just a thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one. Australians are just a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Some good sentences in this stream. What are you gonna call it? So many choices. Always choose the one that would offend people the most. Get the views. <laughs> oh, no, maybe get into double digits. <laughs> um, sorry for derailing the stream. This is a Veer stream. A what? I've already, I've already made the joke of we Veer, of course, constantly. 
Look, even when we were talking, when we were making a game where we started with a thing on rails, we got off the rails. Yeah, <laughs> we had a thing yeah. for like five seconds, so you know. <laughs> What's going on in this picture, Chris? <laughs> this is my very rough illustration of there's an explosion in the forest, something goes wrong, lots of ghosts come out, also floating city. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna work on the assumption that that was also part of the forest originally. Or uh, where, where the city like was in the forest. It works with the tree being an explosion. <laughs> yeah, it's not supposed to be. This is uh, this is an issue with my iconography. <laughs> it, it's like oh. it's the um world tree now from Nordic mythology. Yeah. Idrisil. Yeah. When I was at school, that was my password, because I knew even if I said it, nobody would know how to spell it. <clears throat> <laughs> Smart. Yeah, that's not a bad security also, measure. What <clears throat> link are you going to pick? Because could be Norwegian, could be Swedish, could be Danish, could be mm. a lot of things. Could be Icelandic, that's a hard one. Mm. Oh, one thing I did learn about Icelandic. Um, from via the, the wonderful musical stylings of Dathi Freya. Um, who did uh, it was a Eurovision entry during the Eurovisions that they didn't do Eurovision um, <laughs> which is a shame had fun stuff anyway the name looks like Daddy <laughs> but with a weird D but it's not it's Davi and that D is a, obviously it's an a th sound but from that I learned that not only did English used to have the thorn which was a letter for TH th uh, it had another one, uh, I think it's ETH or something like that, which is the other sound you can get from a TH. So, like, the, the difference between think and the. One of them's th mm. and one of them's th. That would have been extremely useful when learning English. <laughs> yeah. So we used to have <laughs> different letters a, for both of them. A, D instead of the. Yes, yes. I learned that from... The fact that the Icelandic people still have that letter. Th. 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 Yeah. I mean, what we have with English currently is pretty much it started off life looking much more like your more Germanic languages having more of their symbols. Uh, and then the Romance languages got involved. And just got rid of a bunch of stuff. And we still have the sounds. And then added some stuff. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Like the S in Ireland. Um, um. Sorry, to get back on to the main fear thing, because I you. was trying to remember something. I know it's not <laughs> what these streams are at all. Oh, dare you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was trying to remember because... Dark Slore, which for some reason I can never remember. But like in Dark Slore there were like the three races that we're constantly referring to of like the three groups that live in the floating city. They were like once slaves to like a master race of some sort that's just disappeared. Yeah. Which again yeah. So, I, I, I think right now with what we have, pretty much the only one who is left out of the sort of lords, as it were, of the floating city, uh, <laughs> is the mistake, and you aren't getting any useful information out of that thing. No. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like, again, another, like, race that's disappeared, or that's death, dead, or that's gone. Um, again, I'm playing a very, like, apocalyptic event. <laughs> Which I, I try to remember. Uh, so yeah. Just wanted to put that in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and actually that sort of works. The floating city kind of got yeeted into the air. Some people survived. They just kind of went, okay, this I guess this is our city now. This is our kingdom. We will be lords. Uh, and that went about as well as you might expect. And now none of them are left, and the things that are left are fighting over scraps, essentially. Mm -hmm. 
Also, Kira has shared a post which seems to amount to humans are space Doc Brown. <laughs> <laughs> space Doc. <laughs> humans are space mm. Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> Which I'm fine with. <laughs> uh, I have known enough flow. scientists to know yes. <laughs> <laughs> How does one make one's mouth go that way? Uh, you have to be Christopher Lloyd for a start. <laughs> like, that's impressive. I'm, I've just read, I'm pulling that face. No one can see this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think I can do it. I'm just generally very bad at controlling my face muscles. So, I, I didn't even the, try. <laughs> I have the annoying combination of a surprisingly flexible rubbery face, but also just the most bored expression by default. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, when I. <laughs> Well, kind of like I, I want to be playing anything other than poker face. Mm. Um, I can't even open my mouth enough to go to the dentist, so I'm not a candidate for Doug Brown. Yeah, or you might just have a small mouth. That's my issue. Yep. My mouth is so is small enough that it doesn't fit all of the teeth that it came with by default. Ooh. Yeah, me too. Ooh. I had to get teeth pulled for that. Yeah, lovely. And it's always awkward going to the dentist because they'll stick that thing in to that uh, they use for doing the x-rays or the molars in the back. Oh, yeah. And oh. I, it's just like, I can't close my mouth with this thing in there because it's too big for my mouth. I've I had that as a kid, yeah. I close my mouth for it, but it then literally cuts my cheeks. Yeah, I remember having that as a kid, and the dentist would not accept that I couldn't close my mouth. And we, I know, why? We, we ended up going to a different dentist. <laughs> Thank goodness. Good. Yes. Fortunately, my oh. dentist is not an asshole about it, or at least has never been an asshole about it. It's just like, all right, we're going to set this. Just do, do the best you can. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I... Don't cut your mouth unnecessarily. Yeah. <clears throat> I had to go to the dentist relatively recent, and my jaw was hurting the day afterwards. Still, oh. of just like how I had to like keep it open for a while because he had to do, do something on my braces, um, or like the remnants of my braces. I don't know what it's called in English. Um, and that that took a while, and my jaw was just hurting for like the entire day and the entire day afterwards. <laughs> Ooh, lovely. Yeah, I've um after been having been to the um the jaw surgeon thingy magic um I don't know what's what it would be called in English. Um, surgeon. Orthodontist, I think. Uh, it's like a specialized um, office in the um, uh, hospital, specialized hospital I go to. Um, that apparently when you go to the dentist you can ask for this uh, thing they can put in your mouth so you don't have to use your muscles to keep your mouth open. That does oh. it for you. Mm. Um, so apparently you can do that. That's cool. Yeah. Mm, orthodontist is just the guy who works on braces, I think, exclusively. That's the guy I went to, at least. <laughs> um, an orthodontist. Who works on well, I, I know they also like, do things with, like, types and stuff. surgery and alignment and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. It might be. But, I don't know, it, it might be the case that there are more specialized terms for more specialized things in there. Yeah, and might also be a country difference. You know? Yeah, that yeah. too. <laughs> orthodontist is apparently a dentist trained to diagnose and prevent and treat teeth and jaw irregularities. Oh, we have that as well. I went to that as a kid. But that's a different thing as well. <laughs> that's more I, I mean, 
Around here, we've also got people who are ear, nose, and throat doctors. Like, yeah. just all yeah. together. Because apparently there's enough things that affect... Yeah. <laughs> like, if it's I affecting mean... one of them, it's going to affect the others just because they're all of those tubes being shoved in a very small space. Yeah, I mean, we're... it's also just all connected, so... We're a series of tubes. People's... Uh, humans' faces being smushed, so we get constant, um... What's the what's the oh what's the system in the face called? Hmm. Like which part of your face? Because you've got like your nasal passages. Yeah. Um, sinuses. That... Sinuses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I need to get mine looked at. Actually, they've been playing up quite a lot recently. That's fun. Um. I've, I've generally speaking with teeth, I've been very lucky because my wisdom teeth came out good, um, and I haven't had many issues with things being misaligned or needing change. Um, but it did take me about twenty-five years uh, to work out that I'm allergic to toothpaste. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, apparently lips going numb and losing sense of taste is not normal. No. <laughs> no. No one told me this. Uh, <laughs> ah, weird. I mean, some tingliness. I is. Expected if you're using minty toothpaste. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Beyond that, yeah, no, that shouldn't be happening. Yeah, there's something mm. in toothpaste, or some tooth. I found one that's fine. Luckily, it's not the fluoride that's causing the problem. But, but I mean, whatever of it was. you wouldn't know you've brushed your teeth your whole life. Like, how yeah. would you know you're not supposed to feel like that? There's a reason, yeah, apparently, well, when like I was I said, younger, I didn't want to brush my you... teeth. Yeah, if, if you, if with the toothpaste, especially if you go up to an adult as a five year old and go, Hey, mom, mm. my mouth feels tingly after brushing my teeth, you're parent is going to go yeah that's that's the minty that's the minty stuff that's in it to make your mouth feel fresh <laughs> mm. oh dear kira that doesn't sound good your problems with anesthesia whenever you go to the dentist they never give you enough no matter how much you say you need more which led to a moment where you have to have a root canal and you were in pain oh. they told you you're almost done and just kept going oh no that's no yeah, that sucks. when i had they to have a wisdom tooth out don't take the yeah. pain threshold of uh, different people seriously like if you take more than the average then it's like nah it's your fault yeah well, you. isn't it isn't it people um redheads need like one and a half times the amount of anesthesia as everyone else i yeah. don't know about that but that as well but yeah i i don't have that problem but my uh whenever i go to like Whenever there's a procedure done, uh, they are very concerned about me because I have a tendency to start crying. Uh, I don't mean to. It's It just happens. <laughs> I don't feel oh, pain. Yeah. It's just what happens when a, my mouth is open and things are happening in my mouth. <laughs> it's like tears are falling rather than crying. Yeah. Mm. Uh... It, generally like tears are falling rather than real crying but also because I tend to get like very short of breath um, uh, just at the dentist because I associate the dentist with or orthodontist with lack of breath um, and also <laughs> Generally, when I go to a dentist, I look like I'm having a panic attack, even though I don't actually have a panic attack. <laughs> hmm. Well, at least be. then they'll, like, you know, be nice and all. Yeah, they are very nice about it, but there was, like, a time I had, like, I need to get a procedure done, and I was, like, trembling and, like, tears were falling and I was short of breath, but I wasn't, like, panicking or anything. I was that was just happening to me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, see the tears bit I can sort of understand because it's be sort of a similar thing of like if you're holding your mouth open for that long, I can see that putting pressure on the eye mm -hmm. ducts and then they just yeah. cause tears, similar to like when you yawn and get a little a little bit you, of you, tear out. You but, need like yeah. a little a little sign that says I am not having a panic attack but with <laughs> with the word not can be flipped over. <laughs> it's like we're um, supposed to be open sign yeah yeah but it it 
um, it's like the tears come from whatever, like, because I have to keep my mouth open. Um, the trembling probably also comes from that because I tend to like just tense up a lot, hmm. which just overexerts my muscles and causes me to tremble, I think. Um, and shortness of breath is just something I associate with the dentist and orthodontist because um, I did have braces for a while. Um, and before you get braces, you have to like, uh, like bite into like this like gummy uh, the thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, I loathed that experience. <laughs> I hated it yeah. so much because I felt like I couldn't breathe. And that was you one time I was stuff? actually panicking at the Good. dentist. Yeah. <laughs> um. So it's just like constantly in my mind that that is a possibility that's that that happens because I had to like do it twice, like one time at the beginning of like when I start to have race and one time at the end, and it was just I hated it. I hated it so much. <laughs> yeah, the goo is not pleasant to bite into. Nope. <laughs> Another possible title. Um, <laughs> and on that my note... Mom said night night. Who? <laughs> my mom came in and said night night. <laughs> oh, uh, good night. Uh, yeah, on that note, unless we have more te tooth talk. No, tooth I talk. think I'm done. <laughs> Swoosh. That was uh, a Project Via stream. <laughs> I love where these go. Um... <laughs> Which is wherever, I guess. Um, thanks for wherever, coming. Whenever. We got we got some ideas and such. Um, I yeah. will go back and check to see whether or not this is the last spin or whether there's one more. But either way, either next week or the week after, we'll start actually trying to piece together a story for this Ooh, and get into the uh, exciting. Let's actually exciting. cook some spaghetti. We could actually like call the stream that. game dev stream. <laughs> game dev stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except I, there I, is still no game that we are making with this. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> they don't have we, to know that. We're developing it. We're not making it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a different thing, you know? <laughs> also, I've just realized if, if my analogy of like, we finished throwing the spaghetti at the wall, so now we're going to cook it. Have we been throwing dry spaghetti at a wall? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like that's why it doesn't wall. stick. Yeah, that's why nothing's stuck. <laughs> hmm. uh, the floor is yeah. very painful to walk on. It's just been <laughs> up. It's got shards of spaghetti all over the floor. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Yes, thank you for coming along. Um, hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday with stuff. Uh, no, I don't need to do that. For the, the always get the, the. I made this. Yeah. Um, sorry, I always forget about my. It's fine. Streams. Neo! Finale, hopefully. <laughs> oh, sorry, that makes it sound like I hate the game. No, but. <laughs> <laughs> it should end at it some point, right? <laughs> And going, and going, <laughs> and going. Uh, Forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, Wednesday, more make knockoff music. Um, Saturday, friend games. Sunday, this. But cooked. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Maybe cooked. <laughs> um, all being well, I may also have a new video ready tomorrow. Maybe for patrons. Yeah. So I've been making very silly things for it today. So hopefully you enjoy those. Sounds like um, a good day. Sounds like yeah. a great time. So if you remember the, the old Hitman game we played. Yeah. Um, yes. Actually, it's pr pretty better if you don't remember. But <laughs> 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 anyway, hopefully it's a good time. I got it down to 22 minutes. <laughs> Ooh. The original oh, edit was the original edit was thirty five, <laughs> so I think I've done well. Uh, <laughs> Yay! Anyway, thank Can't you for coming wait. along. <laughs> You're gonna have to because I haven't finished Yay. it yet. 
<laughs> the neo no. ending story. Oh no. <laughs> um yeah. Thank you for coming along. Hope you have a wonderful yeah. time. Hope hope your knee gets better, Kiro. Hope uh, you don't get your knee broken by a character. <laughs> yes. I hope, I hope Chibi's uh gremlin children are do not hurt you anymore. You um, better behave. <laughs> And I hope that the Kiro's gremlin children do not hurt Jibby in retaliation. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Have a wonderful time, everyone. Look after yourselves. Thank you for being here. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.